at this moment i'm so happy to be i feel so happy because really at the entire of my life it's belong here in hawksburg now when i'm entering the entrance of hawksburg really i can feel that i'm just entering my home i miss it My name is Ndombe Sizwe Mafikane. I'm from Hawksbeck. And I was born there and grew up there from Hawksbeck. In the property called Hidden Away. My father was working for Mr. Seanland and Mrs. Seanland from that place. And we are seven children. All of us, we were born from that place. I think my father was working for them more than 30 years. We have to move from there. The problem, the reason why we were moving from there is that the property was sold. And while they were selling the property, they didn't even told my father that I decided to sell the property. And when the new owner was arrived to check and see the property, how it is, and they told him they doesn't need him there with his family because they're going to bring their own stuff. They have to move out. You know? And it was sad because most of our lives were there at Hinawe. We didn't have the land from the villages. No? And they go to Komkulu, and my father was working there. While he was working there, and he was realized that he must have the property, his own site, and he have to go to one of these villages to go to have asking for a land and speak with the headmen or chairpersons of the villages. And then he found a piece of land from Umsalani, where there is Umsalani Dam or Binfield Dam now. In 1985, they moved us from that place because they built a dam during the Siskayan government. Yeah, it was 1985, they moved from us to here at Elundini. And they gave my, the government gave my parents the wooden houses, which is consists of two, two rooms. That's a kitchen and a bedroom, or some sort of that. Although we were, I can say we were 10 family members in that, in that wooden house. In Tombi Seasway's family home in Lushington is in a remote area away from employment opportunities. Seasway was forced to move closer to employment. Her living situation became inconvenient and unreliable. As a result, she decided to build her home in Bold Point, regardless of any consequences she may face for doing so. My strong, strong conviction in Bold Point is that, firstly, I am the first person who did decided to go and build my wooden house or whatever is a shackle, whatever it is. But I just decided saying that I was sick and tired of always running around, staying behind somebody's property, let's say the white people's property, behind their yards, behind their yards. Because the reason why I was getting sick of that. When I'm just into that property, let's say I was already old enough, I have to go and sit in my own house while I'm still in that. Maybe I'm hiring or maybe I'm looking after somebody's house. And then the new property, a new owner bought, the owner of the property, sell the property and the new owner buying. When he's buying, said, I don't need anyone here. I have to look around again, checking for the house. I said, aha, no man, there is a place which is belongs to us. When I'm talking us, the black people of, of Foxback. And the worst thing was happening is that they give the place for the commonage. When I'm talking about the commonage, I'm talking about the animals, that is cows, goats, sheep and everything like that. And they did the government was forget about us. Just was just saying that I'm gonna give the land for the commonage. And I was just decided, how? How can the lands have the lands? I mean, the, the animals have the land. Although I'm a human being, I haven't got the land. And all those animals are belongs to us. Let's go. 
and then I've just decided I'm going to build my own house there because I'm sick and tired of waiting for the government to come and build our houses. They were not even answering us. We did fight for the land and we, are not, we were not fighting, doing some toy toy and everything like that. We were just having the meetings and sitting with them in a good way, in a good manner, asking for their lands, but they were not responding to us. It's whereby I just decided, uh-uh, I'm going to go and stay there. No one is going to remove me. In Tombi Sizwe's heart and soul is in Bold Point, but she had to move back to her family home in Lushington to look after her father due to his critical health. Unfortunately, Sizwe's father passed away in 2016 after suffering his fourth stroke. Two years later, she still stays in Lushington. The reason why I've got the children, I've got two grandchildren of mine, and my sister's daughter and my brother's daughter, those three are still going to school here at Lushington. I'm still looking after them, but I'm going to go back to Nepal Point next year. <laughs> I am the first person here first. I did build my own house. It was the wooden house, two wooden houses, small houses just below there. And I have decided that, okay, let me build my new house here, which is four rooms. I did build it with water and top. And it was not easy. That's my second house. And it was the symbol of telling the white residents of Hawksbeck and our president or the government saying that I'm not moving anywhere from the pole point. I'm just building my home because Hawksbeck is my really home. I got no life from Washington. My life is here. I will be buried here in Hawksbeck and I will come back and rebuild my house. As you know, it's really damaged. There is some sort of a progress now. We got the electricity from Paul Point and the other streets. That means the government, there is a little bit of changes coming. That means into the future, this, this place, with, it will be. The, another thing, it can reach what was I always dream about. I'm still dreaming of having the clinics, the schools and everything into this Paul Point. I'm got that. Mm, hope something is gonna, gonna be happening and we're going to get more better things and we are going to reach that point. <laughs>